uh, before we part ways here. Uh, so in the past, uh, David Stern and Adam Silver have both said, you know, no to the idea of relocating teams. Uh, so why the sense of urgency here with this Oklahoma City Thunder uh, new arena deal? Well, what are you basing your statement on? Because a lot of teams have relocated over the last 30 years. I wouldn't say it's their first preference, but what do you mean mm -hmm. they've said no? I mean, uh, they have also said yes, including to our team's relocation. Mm -hmm. I was talking about last year uh, involving, uh, I believe Adam Silver was asked about relocating uh, or bringing back the supersonics. And he said no to something like that and said, you know, we're not talking about relocating at this time. Um, just sort of something like that. Yeah, sure. Yeah, well, um, the reality is NBA teams have relocated and the list of former NBA cities is as long as my arm. And um, that's how we got this team. And, you know, so we're playing in an arena that's the second cheapest in the league. It's the smallest in the league. Um, and, you know, candidly, there just is not an NBA team, including the one that we have that would sign a long-term lease to play in that arena. I don't really find many people anymore who don't believe that we need a new arena. I think they just get down to their preferences over how it would be paid for. Um, and some of those preferences are just not realistic. They're nice. I mean, believe me, I, I would, I will always accept any, any money for our public coffers that come from, from third parties, but I also have to live in reality and we have to, you know, get things done here in this city within, you know, uh, within the structures of the real world. And it's a hyper competitive environment to keep an NBA team. And we're the 42nd largest market. You know, there's um, 30 NBA teams. You just look at that, those numbers right there. You know, by, if the free market were the only, uh, you know, force in this in this debate, then we wouldn't have an NBA team. We've already beaten the free market by having one as the 42nd largest market. Um, but it does put us in a position where we're always going to be fighting for our place. And there are 18 markets bigger than ours that don't have an NBA team. Some of them already have um, billion-dollar arenas. I think we're very fortunate that we do have local ownership that wants to be here and is willing to work with us and try to make something work. But um, we can't expect that uh, that situation is going to completely rewrite the rules of the game. And it's a it's an unforgiving game. It's just as unforgiving off the court as it is on the court. So I, um, you know, I just I just got to live in the reality of the situation, which is if we want to have a future in Major League Professional Sports, specifically the NBA, we have to build a new arena. and you know, in markets our size, we're going to have to do it for the most part. We're getting a contribution from the team. It's basically a donation. I mean, they're not getting anything for that. They're not owning any part of the arena. It's still going to be owned by the people of Oklahoma City. Um, so I'm grateful for that because that's a first in city history. Um, and that's that's kind of the deal. That's Those are the terms by which they're willing to sign a long-term lease. And uh, 30 more years in Oklahoma City is a tremendous amount of time. My kids will be my age by the time that agreement expires. So um, to me, and especially combined with the fact that you can do all this without a tax increase, to me, it's a win-win. Um, and it's a great legacy for our community. Uh, but ultimately, the voters get to make that decision for themselves on December 12th. Yeah, and you mentioned uh, ownership pitching in. I don't know some people have spoken publicly about them being upset that ownership is only contributing $50 million. Some have attributed that to about 5% of uh, the deal that we know about so far. Uh, what would you say to some folks who are kind of upset with what ownership is or, or what they're pitching in and, you know, their desires for a new deal, so to speak, where ownership pitches in more? Sure. Well, a new deal isn't happening. Right. I mean, it, it is not as if the city manager and I didn't suggest that the team contribute more. I mean, that those those conversations have already occurred. This is what they've agreed to. Um, these are the terms by which they'll play in Oklahoma City. And, you know, we sort of have to decide if it's worth it. And I I happen to believe that it is. And I also have the perspective that we have always built our own arenas 100 percent of the time with for with 100 percent of the dollars. Um, and so I look at it as $50 million. That's 50 million more than we've ever received. We built arenas in 1937 and 1972 and 1993 slash 2002 for, for the most recent one. 
and we've never gotten anybody to contribute to them before. So this shows maybe, uh, you know, our elevation in the world, but we're still one of the smallest markets in the NBA. You know, our peers are cities like Memphis and New Orleans who got nothing uh, from their owners uh, in their arena, in their, you know, arena facilities. So um, I hope we keep growing. I hope we one day we get those big market deals, but comparing us, to San Francisco or Detroit, you know, these metro areas that are that are like three or four or five million people larger than us, that's not realistic. And sometimes it's a thankless job to be the leader who has to tell you the reality of the situation, but the reality of the situation is we're a small market and uh, we have to make a decision if this is what we wanna do. Um, we, I believe, have all seen with our own eyes what a difference this team has made in the last 15, years, you know, jumping from the 31st largest city to the 20th, 62% GDP growth, and all the other things that have come along with that. Um, so I think it is worth it. I mean, I think that when you think about $600 million in annual economic impact, that pays for itself, that, that arena pays for itself in a year and a half, and then you still got 28 more years of, of pure profit. So from a ROI standpoint, it's a no brainer. I get it. I mean, of course, I would, I would love more money uh, to be contributed as well. But that's not happening. So you just have to decide if you can live with this deal or not. And I, I find that generally people in Oklahoma City tell me that they can, they're ready to move past that issue and, and you know, maybe maybe better understand also just the hyper competitive reality of this business that we're in. And I know there's been uh, lots of talk about sort of the threat of leaving uh, the city if this deal is not made. Uh, did ownership say this or did they make this known to you that, you know, we're probably not going to stay here if there's no new arena? I've been saying this for two years. I'm I, I'm shocked that people keep asking me this question as if they don't know that the team won't be here if we don't build a new arena. We don't have a lease, right? A team does not stay in a city where it does not have a lease. Our lease expired earlier this year. We are now in a very short-term lease with less than three years left. And the express pur stated purpose of the lease, which I explained a year ago, was just to give us time to put an arena deal together. There is no viable future for the NBA in Oklahoma City uh, without a new arena. Th this team is not going to sign, nor is any other team going to sign a long-term lease to play in an aging, too small, too cheap, arena that wasn't even built for the NBA. You you want an NBA team, you got to have an NBA arena. So um, I don't, I, I feel as if I've been very clear about this, that, that you, if you want the Thunder to stay, you have to vote yes on December 12th. There's so many different ways to analyze this, but at the end of the day, it's a very simple question. Do you want OKC to stay big league? Do you want OKC to have the Thunder? Then vote yes on December 12th. If you want the Thunder gone, then vote no on December 12th. It's it's a pretty basic decision. And what I think is so beautiful about it is we get to make that decision, right? It's up to the voters. It's not up to the political leaders. The Thunder have presented their terms and we get to decide if we think it's worth it. I do think it's worth it. I'm a, I'm a yes vote on December 12th. Um, but I mean, people get to make that decision for themselves and that's a great thing. Gotcha. I'm just addressing, you know, all the concerns and yeah. wanting you to, uh, I guess, respond to those uh yeah no I, no 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 i i i'm not taking this personally don't take <laughs> okay. it personally for me, no. <laughs> okay perfect perfect i'm just making sure um i guess as one of my last questions uh there have been uh some council members in the past councilwoman hammond who have shared uh concerns about there being a lack of transparency about uh this new arena deal and i know we've talked about it in the past uh, and I believe you said something along the lines of where has Councilwoman Hammond been these last 14 months? Uh, I guess, would you still reiterate those, you know, same statements today or where are you uh, falling on that? I mean, people have talked to me about almost nothing else but this arena for the last 14 months. So, yeah, I know it's a huge public discussion. I think everybody's well aware. And certainly there's about a a million and one ways to communicate your views to the mayor of Oklahoma City. I'm very accessible and everybody knows that. And uh, you're you're always just a tweet away from communicating your view. But I do think it's also important for people to understand that just because they make a suggestion about the way they think the deal should be different, um, you know, it's an agreement, right? And an agreement requires the assent of two parties. And, you know, it's one thing to just say, well, I think it should be this way, but if the Thunder aren't you know, open to agreeing to that, 
um, then it doesn't really matter, right? It's a little different than like a crafting a MAPS 4 where we kind of as a community can sort of unilaterally decide what we want to do. In this case, um, you know, you had a you had a separate party that had to agree to everything. So um, everything that people have suggested to me over the last 14 months was certainly brought forward. Um, but what we have in front of us now is what the Thunder were willing to agree to. And that's how a process like that works. Um, and, um, you know, they have to weigh many things in their judgment, uh, including the opportunity cost of not doing business in larger markets, which are currently available to them. Um, but they do love Oklahoma City and we love them. So we want it to work out. And this was uh, the terms by which they felt it, that it could. But um, we have I mean, I've spoken probably more about this topic over the last 14 months than anything else in, in my tenure as mayor, other than maybe the pandemic. And, uh, you know, devoted uh, half of my state of the city address on two occasions to it. I mean, the level of detail paid to this um, is is very high. So I, I I don't know how we could have been more transparent. We've I've shared every sort of detail that we have along this journey. And those who have followed it closely, I think, feel pretty well informed. I know that you've mentioned uh, 900 million as the minimum. Mm -hmm. uh, part of the deal is there a maximum set well i mean there's a maximum in that you know it's a six-year 72 month tax so it can only raise what it can raise right and it's kind of understood that there's no other major source other than the you know the, the maps for dollars that are just actually already for an arena um or the team contribution so i mean there is kind of an inherent maximum but there's no stated maximum but there are only so many sources of dollars I just think the team felt like in the agreement, they really wanted that minimum to be explained um, just so, you know, really for budgeting certainty so they could really believe that we're getting, uh, that this community is gonna construct a $900 million arena. Um, I think that minimum was was pretty important to their planning purposes. Gotcha, and I, I, I already know your answer to this question, but I just want uh, to hear yeah. your reasoning. Uh, are we getting a good deal? Why or why not? Well, there's a couple answers to that. The first is we're getting the deal we're getting. So, <laughs> so you, you know, it, it, there's not a different deal to be had. Any deal that comes after a, a failure to to com to complete this deal is going to be far worse because we're basically in a de facto um, exclusive negotiating chapter right now. And the moment that Oklahoma City rejects the deal that's been offered. Now we're in a bidding war because there's 18 other cities out there. And many of my friends who are mayors in those communities, they're going to feel bad about it. They're going to send me a text of apology, but they are going to be reaching out to our team and they're going to be reaching out to the NBA and they're going to be making offers. And many of those cities already have arenas that are spectacular. They already have larger markets. We're going to, we're going to have a real hard time competing in a bidding war. Um, we're, we're only going to win in a situation like this, where we get kind of an exclusive negotiation. So the deal is what the deal is. Um, and you ultimately can't, I don't think you, it's, it, it doesn't, it doesn't make logical sense to compare it against mythical deals. What makes sense to is to compare it against the idea of not having the team and not having that $600 million in economic impact, not having that brand that we get now internationally, not having um, the community unity, the quality of life, the concerts, um, the philanthropy that comes from the team. Um, that's what you have to compare this deal against is the deal of not having a team. And, um, and that's the reality of the situation. So in that comparison, yeah, it's a win-win deal and we can do it without raising taxes. So I'm excited about that too.